Let us get it. And clap it up. <sighs> Bear on Bears fans, the draft day two has come to an end, and the Chicago Bears have made some really nice picks. But I must say, the division has also gotten better. We'll break all of that down on today's episode of the Windy City Breeze. A little late edition for y'all, man. Late night kids out here in the Winnie the Pooh joint out in this mug, bro. Okay. Hey, fam, you know I just did, I just realized that you just went live. I thought we was like re- pre-recording. I was We're not live. Wow. We're, We're not live. That thing says live, dog. We're not live, bro. We're just recording. Live. We're not live. We're just recording. There's no comments. I think you lying to me, dog. Go check it <laughs> out. Go check it See, this, this me, is the, you out here late night. You got the Scooby-Doo joint on right now. You hey, out here looking here. like Rut Row Raggy. That mother look hey, comfy you, as heck. I ain't going to stunt with you. Bro, I'm comfy <laughs> as heck. I don't even care. Hey, man. I, uh, going. I be going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, listen, Bears, I, I think the Bears made some nice pickups. I do think the division got better. By the way, hit that like button, subscribe to the page, man. We do talk Chicago sports daily on this channel. It's the only channel to talk Chicago sports, how Chicago talk. So make sure that you get in yeah. tune with us, man. Yeah. Y'all got uh, Kid and them's thoughts yesterday on the breeze on the uh, Darnell Wright pick. Um, I mean, listen, I y'all know I was on board with him. I thought Darnell Wright was the best right tackle in the draft. Now coming into day two, I wanted to know what the Chicago Bears were going to address. They went D-line. They went D-line heavy. I kind of love it. Uh, kid, what did you think about uh, what the what the Bears did here on day two? Man, it was expected, to be honest with you. I think uh, every time we actually talked about what the Bears would do with the, in the first round, we knew it. I, I said it had to be offensive uh, on the offensive end. They did that. Love it protection for Justin but then going into the second round I knew that we had so many holes in the defense to fill you've been big on that as far as tell it as saying what we need to uh to actually plug in and things of that nature and so when you pass up on the opportunity to get Jalen Carter I kind of figured that once they've got uh, Justin some protection they pretty much predominantly go defense uh until later uh later in this draft and and I like the pick so far man I like I like what they've done I like how it actually allows us to still be competitive. And I think if we have to rank it as far as teams who've made big splashes at a draft for what they need, I think we were, we fall into like a top five team as, as far as how we've performed so far. Yeah, I I, I love what the Bears did here, especially going with uh, Javon Dexter. First off, uh, they take him 53rd overall. I mean, listen, you needed a three technique. You got a three technique. To me, he's more of a run-stopping three technique, but he can create pressure. That's the one thing the Chicago Bears didn't have. And I think the one thing that when Ryan Poles was talking about what he what he is uh, moving forward, he was talking about that this guy still has a ton of room to build muscle mass. He has a ton of room mm-hmm. to add weight. And he ain't a small boy. He's almost, I believe he's 6'6". Six, six. They say they're listing him as nearly 6'6". Six, six. You know what I mean? So that means he might still be growing. He's only, here's the best part, a three-year starter. He's only 21 years old. Able to make an impact right away. I think this is a guy that's, and and here's the thing. These are guys that have to be impact players. I think he's more of a development piece starting off. I think you'll probably see him take a little bit of time at the beginning of the season to get into his rhythm, but I like how he's able to get through Mm -hmm. the line. I love his big swim move to get around the center. I think he's going to be a fixture for the Chicago Bears team, at least uh, in in the right now, right, where you know you're going to see him on that starting D line. I think he's going to be a guy that's going to make other guys' life easier once he gets adjusted to this team. Moving into the the actual uh, the second pick, man, we got Tyreek Stevenson, yeah. uh, CB cornerback from uh, Miami. How did you feel about that pick? Stevenson's a, a really interesting pick for me. I, I like the pick. I think he's going to be an impact player. He's a guy that also can do a little kick returning as well. I wanted the Bears mm-hmm. to be able to go out there and get an impact special teamer later in the draft. But the fact is that he actually can do a little bit of both. We've seen guys do that in the NFL a ton, right? Uh, I like what he does defensively. I think he's got good instincts. Um, I, I think he breaks on the ball 
really well. Not a big interception mm-hmm. guy, more of a knock that thing away type of guy. I think uh, I'll tell you this right now. Uh, I don't think we'll have to see Kendall Vildor much more. And that makes me happy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to be, <laughs> like, listen, I'm, I'm sick of Vildor, dog. Like, it's been four or five years. Now, here's the tough part about him, right? The other issue that the Chicago Bears need, and this is where you start to ask yourself, was this the right pick? You had to address cornerback, right? But JMS <laughs> goes mm-hmm. in the next pick to the New York Giants, I believe, took JMS. And uh, he is somebody that would have filled a serious need for the Chicago Bears at center. I've said this on the Chicago Bears podcast. I've said this here. Where is Lucas Patrick? Is he alive? I saw him at the event. I did see him at the event. I know he's moving around. He's alive. I don't know if he's going to play football. (laughs) Is he going to be on the field is what you're asking. Is he going to be on the field? I don't know if he's going to be on the field. Man, it seems like you just took shots at three different people on this team. You low key didn't say anything about Valus as well, as far as a uh, kick return team. So you said this uh, Steve's a good place. Hey, hey, listen, you moved hey, him out hey, there listen. without even mentioning that. I just want to let you know that. Listen, uh, don't take my Vildor opinions off the on team. Don't no, Vildor can go. I ain't worried about that one. Don't take my <laughs> opinions on Valus. Go watch Devin Hester when he joined us on the Chicago Bears podcast. And you see what he said about Valus Jones. He hit, he didn't say nothing wrong. He said he got the ability to be. I said, what do you think about him as a, as a shifty player who can be nice, right? And he just went, eh. he got it. He got Devin the ability. Hester. You know what I mean? Come on, dog. <laughs> Devin, Devin Hester was actually looking pretty smooth out here. Had his sub with him as well, uh, making those uh, announcements on those picks. The today, number two it's pick, always yeah. good to see us. Always good to see him actually uh, get some shine, man. They always be talking about him on the low, but I think he's pretty smooth. I actually like the purple he had. I thought he'd go for more of a blue, so, you know, Chicago blue, but it's like a purple suit. I see that. Hey, right? listen, it but- probably was a blue, but they had a TV fader on, and it turned mm-hmm. it purple on the TV. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like a guy we know. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's, it's really blue. But it's really blue. Day. Hey, that suit was teal, folks. <laughs> So that's what happens in round two, and I know that we're. Do you do you here. like do you like going cornerback over center? No. No, I think uh, we should have went center. Um, here's a, here's the one thing I'll say. Pose DB did, we, did need to be addressed. It's not like they just picking people. They did need to be addressed. That's the, I think that's the issue right now. If, if if I'm just being honest, we just had so many different positions to fill. Yeah, that I can't be mad at you feeling a position and especially since you know i'm on the outside i don't know exactly how they feel about you know what they're going to do um after this draft for all those individuals who go undrafted because i know that post has actually uh we've hinted towards being able to do something there um some other free agency moves and things of that nature like it's some it's time to actually still make some moves for this particular roster yeah um with that being said you know we as fans media now we have our ideas what they should do uh i have no idea what they want to do i saw some names up there that we had really was high on like jms was actually why i asked you that question because you had a couple people on your list that we had chances to get yeah almost everyone on your list we had a chance a legitimate chance to get and we didn't get them the only we got one darn no right we get. I, I was the guy i was the guy i really wanted <laughs> And Jaden Reed went before. Jaden Reed went well before I thought he was going to go. I did not think Jaden Reed was a second round pick. Uh, I thought he had the talent to be, but I did not think he was going to be in. I, I thought, uh, listen, it's true Packer fashion, right? They're going to pick this guy in the second round and then he's going to go on to be a world beater, right? He's going to turn <laughs> into the greatest thing of all time, but they still don't pick wide receivers in the first, right? You know what I mean? Like, come on. Still don't pick wide receivers in the first. Um, yeah, but outside of that, like, really, you had. You had Jalen Carter. You said if you could get him, you get him. You have to get him. Yep. We didn't get him. Um, we did have – there are there were some offensive tackles that we could have gotten in the second round, um, even moved up for him if we really needed. You yep. know, so it's like it's like he didn't make the wrong moves, no. but he made the right moves. It was very calculated. He's been disciplined. We we know what we're getting at at pose, and that's that's pretty cool. It's a difference to change the speed from what Pace would do. What Pace was more of a wild card. I – which is more my thing. I, I like people who take risks, uh, but I can't hate it. I can't hate it at all. And I just want to see what it looks like on the field. I mean, we as we go into round three, how did you feel about Zach Piggins? I know we needed some help on the interior on the uh, uh, defensive end. On the defensive I'm gonna be line. honest. With, I'm gonna be honest it. with you. I, I I like this one with Zach Pickens, right? Because to me, when I looked at Zach Pickens' game, um, he was somebody who. 
I, I look at more as a, a guy that you can now bring your defensive line in waves, right? Like you still have Dominique Robinson on this line. You still have uh, added Demarcus Walker. You've got, mm -hmm. uh, uh, right, like like you, you, you've got players in here now with the, with the two guys that you drafted that you can start to throw bodies at guys. The one thing that I'll say about what the Bears did a lot or what the Eagles did last season, right, was that defensive line didn't allow you a chance to breathe. That defensive line didn't allow you the chance to be like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I get to take this play off because now so-and-so's out of the game. Oh, snap, you coming back mm -hmm. at me with another guy that's able to put the paws on me. That's a problem. Um, <laughs> I, I think that that's what the Bears yeah. are trying to build with this defensive line, and I think it's a slow burn. Listen, I know this is not the Hall of Fame defensive line of old. I know that we didn't go get Jalen Carter, but I'm okay with that in the situation because I see said this on on the show today and and uh i think that this is the real thing that we have to understand our brains are wired for defense our brains are wired for defense hit that like button if you agree hit the like button if you disagree it is what it is it, we're chicago always has been i want to see good defense listen i i'm the same way guess what i want to i the, i get more entertainment out of seeing somebody pick someone apart defensively than I do seeing somebody score mm -hmm. 40 points in a game. I get more entertainment out of pitchers duels. In the NBA, and when I, the, the guys that I love are the Kawhi Leonard's, right? Because you're sitting here trying to figure mm -hmm. out a way to get around them, and all of a sudden the ball ain't in your hand no more, and he's going mm -hmm. the other way for a dunk. I love defense, but we have to change our mindset. Games aren't being won 10 to 7 anymore unless we play in a four-play schedule. Yeah, you know I mean, like right now we can win some games <laughs> 10 to 7. Yeah, but games yeah. aren't being won 10 to 7 anymore. The best defense in the NFL last season lost in the playoffs on a 30 to 27 game. It was that the season mm -hmm. before. Season before with Pat Mahomes and, and the Bills went at it, right? Lost in a 30 to 27 game. The best yeah. defense in the NFL. And I think the You need to be able is. to put points on the board. Yeah, they also have one of the best offenses as well when you said they did, the yes. So it's like they had a complete team, and it's like that's what you want to build. Now you have to build it to be competitive. Like if you're going to make it there, making it to the Super Bowl is one thing, and I, I think, hey, we can't, you know, turn our nose up at that. We haven't been there in nearly 20 years. We haven't won <laughs> one in 40. Oh, yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. We haven't been there. We haven't been there. I was going to say, you, you're a little short, my boy. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> About 17 years. I mean, hey, we got I there. But, I mean, yeah. you know, that team that got there would not make it there today. Right? That team no. like that got there wouldn't make it, wouldn't even make it close, to be honest with you. And so I, I'm with you 110%. You know I'm big on offense. Yeah. I am, I'm big on offense. And it's only because I don't think we have – you know, deep playoff uh, potential. I don't think we we have a Super Bowl run in this this season. I want to see Justin develop. I'm all in on that one. So the fact that we got some some uh, protection from him, I love it. Uh, but all the pieces we got on defensive end, realistically though, key rotational pieces, potential starters, and then I think two of them are day one starters, if I'm not mistaken, right? I think uh, not Stevenson, but the one we just mentioned, uh, Pickens may be a day one starter. Am I am I not? Am Pickens, I not? Am I tweaking on that one? I think I think Pickens could could compete to be a day one starter. I think Pickens is a little bit of a question mark right now. I, I listen on the Bears, he might be a day one starter, right? Like that's that's realistically yeah. what this is on a real team or a real team. That's bogus. On a on a good team, right? On a playoff team, is he a day one starter? Probably not. Um, but I think on mm -hmm. this team, he will be a day one starter. Um, we or at least, or at least competing for, sure. for a day one starter. I think Javon Davis is definitely probably a day one starter for us. I think because okay. we have such a void at that position, he'll take that spot. How do you think? Uh, so overall, let's just break this down because I know we haven't given him a grade, and I'm gonna just lean on you. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna lean yeah. on you. This is your sport. This is your this is your uh, arena. Yeah. How would you grade how he's performed this draft? Pose that is from the, with the trades. So with the, include the trades, include the trading up. Yeah. Think about the people who were still available, things of that nature. How would you grade that? First round to me is an A. Um, I think first round, you have to take into account the fact that you got DJ Moore. There's no wide receiver that's better in the draft than DJ Moore is. Um, I, and I think you also it, like even looking at, I was talking with Tommy Waddle today and he, and he was talking about how he broke down the tape and he said, there's good receivers in his draft, but I don't think that there's any, 
you know, world breakers out here. I don't, I don't see a number one receiver. I think Jackson Smith and Jigba went to the perfect situation because he can come in and be the number three, basically, mm-hmm. right? Like, so he's going to look like he's going to look amazing. Gonna there's look no George good. Pickens in this draft. I I mean, here's the thing. Realistically, right, there's no George Pickens in this draft. There's going to be some dude in the fifth round that's catching balls out of nowheresville state. That's going to be an amazing wide receiver. We're going to be talking about him having a Hall of Fame career and coming out of nowhere. That's how every season in the NFL goes. But I yeah. think there's no, right, Marvin Harrison Jr., who's coming out next season there isn't that guy in this draft so i think the fact that you got dj Moore, that's the biggest thing that you can take away from this draft from a receiver aspect you came into this draft already addressing one of the major needs that we said you also got draft Mm -hmm. capital for next season that allows you to possibly be able to move up or just have the pick outright if the uh if the 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 panthers suck uh and and be able to have a top pick in the draft and then on top of that, you you protected your quarterback. You made a decision that I think changes the mindset of Chicago forever. I, I said this today. Yep. That we've always thought defense. That was the point I was making. Today or yesterday, Ryan Poles thought offense for the first time in a draft. And I think he thought yep. offense like in a way that's actually going to work. Not offense and like, we'll see how this works out. Like when we drafted Mitch, it was like, eh, Kevin White. Okay. I mean, fast, right? Like, game Kareemi. I don't again. know. It's yeah, an actual I, I, distinct plan he put together. He had the receivers that we already got, yeah. uh, with the receiver that we got with the trade. So that first round, that uh, number one overall that we get for DJ Moore, we already had Claypool that with that uh, trade. So now to pair that with, okay, how do I make sure we get the ball to those guys? We got an offense. We got a right tackle to make sure Justin has the time to. It's a real plan yeah. as opposed yeah. to just haphazardly putting it together. That's what you're getting at? Yeah, 100%. Uh, so I give day one an A. Day two to me um, – I would probably go somewhere in the B, B minus range just because I have so many. It's not that I don't have faith in what Poles is doing. I think I have question marks on what the players will become and what they what mm-hmm. they can play as, not because they weren't drafted where they're supposed to be drafted, though. I think that's, that we're just kind of at that point where there's a little bit of a drop-off where now you're looking at the guys who – you're like, okay, I I feel good about him translating, but I don't know 100%. Like, yeah. I know 100%. If Darnell Wright can stay healthy, he's going to be our starting right tackle for the next 10 years. Now, I, do I, I, ask you this. I, I feel that strong sure. about that. I, I don't okay. know about Zach Pickens for the next 10 years. I don't know about mm-hmm. uh, Javon David. Dexter, I'm sorry, Javon David. I, I keep saying that because of Javante. Javon uh, Dexter <laughs> over the next 10 years. Uh, I feel like Tyreek Stevenson will be here and be a dominant guy for us as well. So I, I give him I, – I think he got the right guys for where we were drafting. I probably would have packaged a couple of twos and tried – or yeah, a couple of twos and tried to move up, or a two and a three and tried to move up to uh, – to close that gap and get a little, one more impact player. But, you know, he, he moved up to, to where he felt he, he wanted to go get Tyreek Stevens. I, 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 let's rock with it. I, I, I'd that's say actually, B minus on that, though. That's actually what I want to ask you about. Before, uh, and I, I didn't want to stop you, was on a roll. But if you really look at it, um, you mentioned how Jalen Carter, that one piece, what he does for our defense, and how yep. much he actually allows all the other pieces that we picked up in the uh, free agency offseason um, to actually do their job well and get to the quarterback and things of that nature. Do you think it was a miss to trade back, even though you pick up a, you pick up a, a pick, right? You pick up a four for next year, by the way. Yep. Uh, you pick it up. You do get a, a right tackle. I'm not saying that this isn't a good pick, but considering – like what? How you feel about the defense? What Jalen Carter would have meant for our defense, and the yeah. opportunity to still get an offensive tackle that you could have played around with on that line to kind of fill those gaps. Because I mean, we still have questions on the left side that most people are like they're not too sure about, but maybe. But yeah. you can still get that around. But on the defensive end, Jalen Carter absolutely filled those gaps, or uh, a major piece for our uh, our scheme. Do you think that that was a potential missed opportunity? Um, I hope I framed that right. No, I, I get what you're saying. Basically, it was was Carter as sure like, fire as I Carter and found a way to get another tackle or find another way to get a move yeah. up in the sec, uh, first round since we had the picks to do so anyway. I think I think you have to look at this now. Listen, if if we had drafted Javon Carter, I'd be sitting here high five and every single Bears fan right with you because our our minds are where our defense. He he is mm-hmm. a linchpin piece for our defense. I mm-hmm. think there's probably a reason they didn't go Carter. I. I Listen, the Bears' average age is, what, 28, 27, something like that? They're young. This is a ridiculously yeah. young team. We had we led the NFL in first and second year snaps last season. Who's the vet that's leading these guys, right? Like we talked about with Damian Lillard 
um, how he talked about there's no vets in the NBA anymore. There's really no vets on a lot of these teams in the NFL. They get rid of the vets before the vets really in a position to be vets. You know what I mean? Your vets are usually your quarterbacks who in this modern NFL are all pretty young, young right now. Like Tom Brady is old, you know, like he's gone. Aaron Rodgers is old. Do you really want him as your vet? You know what I mean? So I think that, um, I think that the Bears didn't feel like they had the infrastructure to mm, lead okay. Jalen Carter and mentor Jalen Carter in the right direction right now. Now, is that an indictment on the Bears? That is what it is, right? That possibly, maybe you ended up missing on the second coming of Aaron Donald. Guess what? If you did, you missed. But if you miss, but, and this is what I always think about, right? When we go back and look at these drafts, do we talk about these drafts as um, a great player, uh, great player, but not as great as that player. Really good player, but not as really good as the great player that went before him. Can't believe, no, you sit there, you go all pro, all pro, all pro, all pro, yeah. all pro, right? Like you, you, and so listen, if this guy becomes a 10 year all pro and he's standing there protecting Justin Fields and Justin Fields, here's the, here's the thing that I want people to understand. Uh, what Jalen Carter does for Tremaine Edmonds and for TJ Edwards, that's what you want Darnell Wright to do for Justin Fields. He I makes, like Jalen Carter makes, Jalen Edwards, or I'm sorry, uh, Jalen Carter would make TJ Edwards and, and Tremaine Edmonds blue chip players. I, like I believe that Darnell Wright makes Justin Fields a blue chip player. I love Justin. I think he's great. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's a blue chip player yet. Got to be able to pass the ball. Yeah, Justin Fields. Yeah, Got to be able to pass the ball. And so to me, right, I think you adding Darnell Wright to the right side of that line, you, you're coming in with a little bit better of an offensive line. I think the Bears still will take a center probably later on in this draft. Um, and, and you're trying to bolster this lineup so that Justin could be all he can. You got him a receiver. You got him a right tackle. You got him a left tackle last year. He's been here two years. He's drafted offensive lineman in every draft. Mm -hmm. Ryan mm -hmm. Pace was here the entire time. The best he gave us was freaking what? Uh, James Daniels? Is that the only offensive lineman he drafted? I'm pretty sure that's that's probably uh, well he drafted Tevin. He drafted Tevin, right? Yeah, he drafted Tevin. He drafted Tevin at the end. But I mean, listen, Tevin, I love I, I would love to see Tevin stay on the but field and injured. and beat a monster that he is, but he hasn't been healthy, which is which is another theme of Ryan Pace uh picks. So yeah. I, I think the Bears have done a really good job uh offseason leading into this draft. And I think they're just not deviating from their plan. They're not, they're That's not good. right there. They're not panicking. I feel like we've seen GMs every year, every time we get this bit panic, because mm -hmm. what's the goal of any GM that comes to Chicago? I got to build an offense. I can build a defense. That's the easy part. We all know how to do that. There's a bunch of people in the bit. I got to build an offense. So you gamble, you go for the big play, right? You overpay for, for, well, I don't know if it was an overpay, maybe you overpay your left tackle a little bit, but you pay big <laughs> for Jay Cutler, right? You go out and you get him, and, and instead of going out and getting him a, a left tackle that's going to keep him up, right, you go out and get him Brandon Marshall. I love B-Marsh, but he didn't help us uh, win a lot of playoff games. In fact, he won none. In fact, he never got there. He's never got there. Yeah. He's the T-Mac of football. You. That's a bar. That's a bar. I pause so that everybody could recognize that. I would say he's the Mellow. Nah, Mellow got to a Western Conference Finals, bro. Mellow. And got to and got to the yeah. second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Did he get to an ECF in New York? I don't know if he got Nah, second uh, round. Just second round. Second just round, second round is round. semi, so so uh yeah, that's a bar. That's a bar. Look at you. You cooking today, huh? I, out here being different. I see you, son. I see you. You're different. Uh, I, before we continue on this one, it, and this is probably just stretching a little bit, but I, I actually, you know, you had a chance to be there. You got a chance to see a lot of this stuff up front. You might, you might have some insights that I, I don't have, so I want to lean on you for I this don't. one. Um, <laughs> hey, you do. You you was there. You you, you Hey, he, he, I like that. This man's being humble. You know, he ain't trying to be David Ruffin just yet. Um, just yet. <laughs> Wait till this Jerry um, Curl get ready. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare! You feel like a jelly boy. You ain't gonna never let that down. Hey, <laughs> that it right look down. wet, but it's dry. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you, man. So Deion Sanders oh. reference. Don't clip that up, y'all, and, and turn that into something else. Yeah, you know I mean, crazy. Oh anyway. God. <laughs> uh, crazy. Uh, considering what the uh, that we traded the thirty two. Uh, for Chase Claypool. Now, mind you, I'm not saying that it's a bad pick. I know some people only see this one thing. Oh, you're picking on Chase. Oh, you you already. 
just looking at what was available, look at what yeah. was possible. Do you think it was still the right move? Even if you don't go receiver with it, do you think it was the right move considering what was available? I know we've had some internal conversations about, you know, being surprised at some names that were still there. You know, if you had that pick, would you could you see a move that would be made that would be like, all right, I will take that over Chase Claypool? I probably should have prepped you for that one. I, I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> it, it's it, Here's the thing. I, I prepped for this because of how hard I came about Chase Claypool when it first happened, right? Like, it, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm the one that mentioned it before the dra the trade happens, and then it? we put the clip out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so I went hard on on that. And and I still – here's the thing. I still have a lot of faith in Chase. I still, I've i seen what Chase can do, um, and I think that he wasn't always put in a position to do that. He's always been looked to be the number two. I've also mm -hmm. seen him be a really good number two. I think the thing with Chase is, right, Chase is a player that you ask yourself, is he worth huge money? And so you're coming to a point here where you're going to have to pay either him or Darnell Mooney. But realistically, right, missing out on a guy that was taken. Who was taken 32 this year? Who was 32? Joey the Porter draft? Jr. from Penn State. Uh, yeah, no, that's a, that's, a, that's a piece right there. That's like a piece. If you talk, hey, that's a quarterback that you'd be like, yeah, no, he's but gonna here's, be there for but a while. But here's <laughs> here's what I here's what I think your modern NFL is though, right? And and whether this is what the finished product is or not, you look at teams that are winning on a consistent basis outside of whatever the Chiefs do because they're just magical. Um, you see yeah. guys that have three wideouts. You look at the Bengals, three wideouts. I look at Philly, three wideouts. I look at uh, uh, um, the the. Why the Bills, right? They got multiple wideouts on that team. You need a ton of wideouts. You need a ton of weapons for these guys mm -hmm. to be able to go to because the defenses are getting better. You have to have That's multiple options. And the big thing is right back in the day, okay, I got my number one. I got my number two. You're not that worried about your number three. Your number two, number two gets hurt. Now your number three is your number two. Your number three wasn't that good. Mm-hmm. Your number two gets or no, your number one gets hurt. Now your number two is your number one. He's taking on all the double teams. Your number three becomes your number two, who used to be Mr. Reliable. He's not that good. You know what I mean? So now I think that the Bears come into this season with three wide receivers that um realistically, I feel good about all three at a minimum catching the football. That's the goal here. Now, listen, if Chase comes out and he still doesn't know the system by the end of this training camp, that's tough. I, I we mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. if that's the case, right? You drafted a dude that that's not going to fit. And it doesn't mean that he's stupid either. I, I've seen that a couple of times. Like, how can't you get this system? I, I, I need y'all to understand some of the best wide receivers in the world couldn't fit in the Patriots offense. Oh, no. You know what I mean? Uh, Ocho Seco uh, said it was tough for him. Uh, it was tough even from a QB perspective for Cam Newton to get it. Uh, only reason Mac Jones even knew is because he ran a similar system in college. It's a hard – it's yeah. it's one of those things that takes time to really develop and learn and get and sink your teeth into. So, you know, I, I hate I hate when uh, – I hate the fact that the fans or just, just social media gives pundits too much of a voice at times because realistically ain't no way in the world that, that narrative should be out there. Football is hard. I, Football bro, is it, hard. It's, it's ridiculously hard. I, I had – I want people to go watch on today's episode of the, of the Chicago Bears podcast. Go watch Tom Waddle break down everything that it takes for a simple five-yard pass to work. I mean, he talks about the quarterback having to be able to receive the snap, dropping back all the offensive linemen, having to work in unison. He's got to come out of his hitch, uh, or he's got to come out of, out of his stance perfectly to be able to get separation on a dude that might be Deion Sanders at that time. He didn't say that, but I think he was talking about the games that he played against Deion. Um, you know what I mean? You got to find a way to get separation. Then, then John Harbaugh's got to deliver a perfectly thrown ball that gets into the hands of the receiver. He's got to be able to make a catch. Like, all that has to happen in, like, four seconds. Football is hard. And I think people look at some <laughs> the fact that some of these people are not as articulate as they would like them to be, and they try to. Do, that doesn't mean that they're not intelligent. So I think some we gotta. It, it's a now, whole I will. I will say this as well. There's some dudes that's football smart, right? I like I, football, I, yeah, like I, 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 like, I like I said. Listen, I'm, 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 I'm content smart. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I got. I'm smart at what I'm smart at. Now, if you want you me to break down some trick. Hey, look, you want me to break down some trigonometry for you? I'm not in the game. Listen, coach, set me out. We, you know what I mean? We, like, we, we ain't <laughs> building rockets out here. I don't even know what we've been used trig for, but okay. Uh, 
Uh, but see, you know it because you said trick. See, I threw the whole name out there trying to sound a little smarter about it. <laughs> well, I, I you know it class. is trick. Hey, man, I know, I I know trick. Yeah, yeah. Me and trick, we like this, bro. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> yeah, listen, I took that class. I failed that joint. I was like, I don't never want to see that book ever again. I ain't never felt so. I ain't never felt so incompetent a day in my life until I got into that first uh, that first year. Uh, so I felt you know my what? junior year of high school. Let's go. <laughs> um, but I know everything has been kind of tongue in cheek. I've been asking you these questions, like, do you think that this should have been? I think these are solid picks. I don't want to. I don't want to continue to try to pr- be under the perception that we're poking holes at what he did. It's just overall, you got how you grade a, a GM. You look at what's available. You look at what we needed. We look at what he did. The only thing I say, I am firmly uh, like I drew a big question mark was why did we trade up for Stevenson? Just because I don't believe he was the best corner available. Um, I thought that there was some corners taken after him that were just as good. Um, or at least it's they also, were just as high. But it's also about who you like and what fits your you that's, know, coach that's, that you're that's trying the to thing. Feel. I think I think that I think that Ryan and here's the thing, right? This is the thing we give praise to uh Bill Belichick for so long for being able to do. And and I wanna if it works out right, we have to give praise to Flus and, and polls for doing it. Thanks. Scheme fit is the most important thing. Facts. If you are talented is is all get out, the thing that makes you so talented is you usually can be talented in whatever scheme I put you in. Mm-hmm. Put you in a 4-3, I put you in a 3-4, you can still get to the quarterback. I put you in, you know, a, a spread offense, I put you in a RPO, you can still be able to make plays as a quarterback, right? Like those are the things that make you great. The question mark that a lot of times happens with players like this is you go for the best talent available in the second round, in the third round, and then you got to force that dude to fit what you do. At a minimum with these guys, I don't think we'll have to force them to fit what we try, we're trying to do here in Chicago. I respect. I that. think that Tyreek Stevenson fits perfectly into what the Chicago Bears want to do in a 4-3 defense. I think that Javon Davis is our nose tackle in a 4-3 defense. I want to see him get to the quarterback a little bit more. I think he only had four and a half sacks in his entire college career. But again, improving his game, working a little bit harder, uh, uh, um, being able to get to the quarterback, high motor guy like that, I, I creating pressure, right? Like Those are the things that fit mm-hmm. what we're trying to do. That's really what the goal in football is. Listen, I can throw LeBron on every team in the world. He'll fit perfectly. I can't put J.J. Redick on every team. Well, actually, I can. J.J. Redick was a dog. Most just don't be paying attention to that. You could put J.J. Redick on every team now. I can't put yeah. P. Will on every team, and he's going to have the same success. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's either going to go down or tremendously up because he's going to yeah, get yeah. more shots or less. You know what I mean? It, no, it really, you just said it's about putting people in a position to win. And – when you do that and you do it well, you have results like the Patriots have. Yeah. Um, you know, they 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 had a great scout team for a while. They knew what they were looking for. They knew the people that they, they, they uh, the mentality that they wanted. And they incubated that culture of success there. Um, we're trying to build the same thing. So I, I appreciate it. You know, I it's one of those things where I looked at this draft and I saw a couple people like, for instance, uh, and I'm not just saying this, like I really didn't have. If we went corner, I thought that I think was the guy from Michigan. Oh, he went off the board after Michigan Michigan DB. Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. Was it Michigan? I'm not even gonna pretend like I went heavy on the DB breakdown this season. D. Um, I looked at the guys that I looked at. Oh snap! They got cocaine bear on up. Never mind. Don't worry about that. uh, (laughs) Um, um. DJ, not more. Uh, um, Turner, DJ Turner. DJ Turner. I thought DJ right. Turner was a better was a was a, would be better than than Steve was a better option than Stevenson, but he was also smaller frame. I thought he was maybe uh, his tape. He looked he looked faster. He looked like he was really good, a uh, really good tackler, things of that nature. Um, what is the scout? Went to the Bengals. Yeah, they need help too. That's good. Uh, hey, hey, number 23 ranked pass defense. <laughs> um, you know, but that's also one of those things where you don't PFF's know. PFF's giving that a B-plus grade. Let's let's run through this real quick. Let's let's see what our, our Bears got Oh yeah, you uh, do in, in the PFF it. grades. Or, I'm sorry, not PFF. I'm tweaking. The athletic grades, I should say. Uh, okay. Tyreek Stevenson, to your point, is getting a B-minus. B minus move. Uh, they said Stevenson measures well. Six foot three and a half, three eighths inches, big DB. 
Uh, ran a four four five at the at the forty time. Has longer arms. Plays really physical. Um, let's see. What's the other one? What was our other pick? It was fifty three. Javon Davis as a pick, or so Javon Dexter as a pick. I'm I'm gonna mess that up. His whole career probably. You uh, messed it up already. I just hey, like seven times, time. bro. <laughs> uh, this is an a. They're giving us an A minus pick. This is what uh, the athletic says. It says Ryan Poles opted for an offensive tackle in the first round to help protect Justin Fields. The, uh, this time, the Bears chose their pivotal three tech for a second year coach, Matt Eberflus. Strong locker room voice at Florida. Dexter recorded 106 tackles last two seasons with four and a half sacks and eight tackles for loss. Power, he's powerful, has a good base in one of the most impressive combine 40 yard dashes. Dexter, 6'5, 310 pounds, finished with a 488. That's scary. That's, can you imagine that running at you, dog? Bro, that's scary. I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to see that, bro. Oh, you my got, goodness. Whatever it is, you got it. You got it. You can have it. He said he was a Jeez. B-gap monster at Florida, picking up 32 quarterback hurries the past two seasons, according to PFF. And that's the main thing, right? When you look at a guy yeah. like him, hurry in the quarterback. I, I, I want him to run... I want him to run the quarterback into our playmakers on the edge. Mm -hmm. Now I also and want to have some better playmakers on the edge, but that's neither here nor there. And that's also the one thing that most people like neglect. They they look at the offense and they say, "Hey, we need to get Justin." I was one of those people, so I'm not just you know calling just anybody out or any particular fan base. Um, but we also barely got to the QB. Yeah. Uh, and now we sold our defense off. Don't get me wrong. We did sell a lot of pieces. We it was a fire sale in Chicago, uh, but we didn't get to the QB nearly as much as we known for because of it. And so now we had those gaps to fill. So I like I like that fact. Going back down to our 64th pick. How did what did they get that? What's that? Uh, Zach Pickens is getting a B from uh, the athletics Says the Bears pick their second D tackle. On Friday, uh, to add to a defense that generated only 20 sacks last year. By the way, Jaquan Brisker had four of them. He plays safety. Uh, a former five-star recruit, recruit. By the way, is 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 it Pickens or it was it was uh, Day er, uh, Dexter that was graded higher than Carter coming into college? One of them was graded higher than Javon or uh, Jalen Carter I coming into college. To you as soon as I heard that line. Uh, former five-star rec recruit, Pickens didn't measure up statistically to that status, but he started all 32 games, very durable kind of guy uh, at South Carolina. Solid, dependable starter for the Gamecocks. Um, Pickens lined up both over center and op outside the opposing guard and had an impact with 13 hurries last season, finished with 131 tackles, including 11 and a half for loss, seven and a half sacks in his college career. He's 6'3", 291 pounds. Again, Ryan Pohl said both of these guys are slated to be able to gain a bit more weight and possibly some more height. Now, I don't so know I how much height you're going to get. 6'3", right? He's a big boy already. I don't know if he's going to be 6'5 by the end of it. But able to get a little bit more weight and height, arm length, 34 inches, going to be a big boy, able to wrap up their 81-inch wingspan. Uh, should be in line to rotate this year with the potential uh, for upward mobility. So that was actually Dexter, who I texted you about six six yeah. three ten. That's what you got over there, six six three ten. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that four four <laughs> that four eight eight forty. Yeah, I looked at that. I was like, yeah. I was actually shocked that he, that he was rated higher than Carter, and for him to fall so far, uh, if he was ranked that high, it was just like, wow. Okay. Well, I, um, the other thing you have to take into account in Florida as well, which could come, bring a little bit of flux, is uh, I believe there was like a, a entire coaching staff change like halfway through, like year two of his college career. So year one, he's in one system. Year two, uh, um, entire coaching change comes in. Year three, you know, he's kind of getting himself back into rhythm and and get fitting into the system a little bit more. So that also plays into it as well. Overall, it looks like none of these picks that – you just read off PFF ranked low. Uh, we got an A, you got a B, B minus, and, and I B know minus. that that right was ranked A minus, right? PFF right is a, a it was an A minus pick. Yeah, your first your first pick was an A minus pick. So what do we average that out as? We got a two. We got A minus A, yeah, B minus B. Trying to get me to do math again. That's law of averages, ain't it? I tell you what, that's a it's a it's a B plus draft. Let's just split the difference. It's a B plus draft. <laughs> 
you know. Maybe I rank a little higher. With confidence. He plays draft. You know what? He's done well with our picks. We already made some moves. I like what he's done. And so uh, what is your overall feel before I ask you this one question before we get up out of here? What's your overall feel about where we are? Let's just say this is the best it is. Everything else is just filler. So this is the best we get. You happy with it? Um. Yes. I mean, after this round, I, we don't know what's happening anyway. Uh, yeah, honest. facts. But I, I, to this point, I'm happy with the draft. To this point, I don't feel like you overly gambled on anybody. I don't feel like you drafted people overly out of their position. I feel like you drafted guys kind of where they were slated to go, and then you sat there and you uh, uh, maybe it was a little bit higher, but you got the guys you wanted. Right, like yeah. you got the guys you wanted. I I fully expected because after we left yesterday, they were trying. The Bears were trying to trade back into the first round. Ryan Pohl said that after he left, he said he was trying to see if they could. They couldn't. They couldn't get a deal mm-hmm. worked out. And here's the thing: there probably was a deal on the table for them to trade back into the first round. He didn't gamble on it, so I like that as well. Speaking of taking gambles, things of that nature, we know where we stay, where we stand. I like what Post has done. He's you know, feel the need on both ends. I can't be mad at it. He he went for the side of the ball that I wanted him to go for first. Definitely can't be mad at it. I know you're a defensive guy. He wouldn't have your defense. I think at this point, one offensive, four defensive players. Let's just uh, one offensive two. player, three defensive players. Three defensive players. So, hey, you know, defense is still favored in Chicago, Midwest Monsters. We, we get it. Um, but let's talk about a few things. Last yeah, I five, mean, if you, go- you count DJ Moore, yeah, two offensive players. Two offensive Hey, look at that, right? Yeah. Um, and then if you count uh Chase Claypool three, because that's a mid-season addition that we made a move for. He technically would have been a 32 pick. Claypool know? feels like a guy that would have been the 32nd pick in the draft, though. <sighs> yeah, I don't know if that's like disrespectful it, or not, but it's I, not, I, I, no, I see it, what you're saying. First round pick. First round pick. Is it still first round? Yeah, 30 32's first round. There's 32 teams. I mean. Yeah. And yeah. this draft this year wouldn't have been first <laughs> round, but yeah, you know I mean, if it, if it, he feels like a guy that would have been taken 32nd overall. I do need that to understand been what? that more. Been, why, been the, why is that? Oh, because Miami. 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 Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yep. Every time I hear that, I say, why do they keep saying that again? I keep forgetting yeah. Miami did that dumb move. But, man, listen, I, I give it a B plus. It seems like we, you, you're you in agreement with me. B I agree with A. That. You know, we, we are we – are, in agreement there. I think no one should be sitting there writing home talking about Poe sucks. No, it doesn't. It he he did what he needed to do. Yeah. Um, let's get your thoughts on a few other things that you saw there. Uh some moves that you saw by other teams. Overall, who do you think won the draft? Like who just made the big moves for their team? You can't even deny it. Like who won the draft? I think Houston's got the best names right now. Um, I think Philly has the room to gamble, and so I love what they've done to rebuild their defense. But it, it's a lot easier to, to take gambles on guys like Jalen Carter when you've been to a Super Bowl, you've won a Super Bowl, um, and you <laughs> and you have a Super Bowl caliber quarterback on your team with most mm-hmm. of that offense still intact, right? Like you can you can take bigger swings on things like that, right? If this draft goes kaput and he's only able to get one guy out of it, right? You got one guy that was added to a Super Bowl caliber team that works out for you. Um, I think Houston started their rebuild the best, but I want to see how it pans out. Again, Houston gave up draft capital. You don't Houston have a did. lot. Houston did give up draft capital. You got Will Anderson. You got Bryce Young. You got right like it's. It, I'm. 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 I'm sorry, not Bryce Young. You got uh, C.J. Stroud. Right. Like I'm glad that you have those guys in your system. You got to get him a weapon, or multiple weapons. Well, you got to get out. him. He does have let a me, running game there already. Let, let me read you who they got though, because I'm. I'm. I'm actually pretty big on what Houston has done. I'm gonna start from the third round. They got Nate Dale. You know, I like Nate Dale. I like yep. this tape. When we reviewed it, let me make sure I'm not missing somebody in this third round. So he's a third rounder. Surprised he failed that far, but seeing how things shaped up, shaped up, can't hate it. Second round of the Houston, Houston picked a center in the second round, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Juice Scruggs. I don't know much about him. I'm not gonna lie, but I know that they needed a center. That I do know. So they 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 tried to solve that issue with the picks that they had, and yep. in the first round they also got. Of course, C.J. Stroud to get their QB. They also got Will Anderson. 
And did they get anybody else in the first round? I don't believe they did. Nah, um, so they got him I'm a not weapon. Ma- I'm not mad at it. I just feel like, right, are you in the... Here, here's the thing that I love about what Poles is doing. I love the names that are there. What are you going to put around the names to make them successful? Right? Who's standing next to Will Anderson? Yeah. No, I, I'm with you. You know what I mean? Like, who's who's realistically, I love, you know, you go out and you, you got a rookie center for C.J. Stroud to grow with. But what else? What else? They still got Tunsil there. there. I think they got Laramie Tunsil still on the left side. Is he still there? I think he's still there. Don't he's just riding it up. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta double check on that. I believe he's still with Houston. I might be wrong on that, but uh, you know what I mean. Like, you, you have, um, man, he's only twenty eight. That's crazy. He is still with Houston. Yes. I, so you uh, got, you got Laramie Tunsil. You got a rookie center. You still got a lot of pieces to fix. You got basically maybe some weapons for him to throw to. I agree with you on the one thing with the Eagles. They were in a position to take some games because they did have a solid team, lit, but they were bleeding. They were take they were taking some L's. They were losing some pieces. And that's typically what happens with a championship caliber team. I think they know. knew they was coming into this with this. <laughs> I think they just knew their game plan. Man, listen, Jalen Carter, dog. Nolan Smith, who again, I, I like if any thing. if we were that's gonna trade up, I that's who I think hey, they was going after. Yeah, I think they was gonna go after him. Uh, yeah. Nolan Smith, dog. They got who they get in the second round. By the way, so they got uh, those two in the first round. Second round. Hold on, I got it right. Did they have a pick in the second round? Or did they move that? Let's go to the third. I round. believe that pick ended up going to. They picked up Sydney Brown from Illinois, dog. I do like Sidney Brown. That's a fact. I do like Sidney Brown. They picked up uh, Tyler Steen. I didn't know much about Tyler Steen, but offensive tackle from Alabama. Um, So they picked him up as well. So I think so far with what they already still have on their roster, I thought they did a heck of a job. Uh, I thought Arizona did a heck of a job. I would say if out of the teams that, uh, that are there, I think, Eagles have won this draft, in my opinion, as far as just what they picked up, those impact players. That's just a scary thing that they've added to their, their team. When I really broke that down, and Steph, you know, Steph ain't going to let me forget that either. Uh, he was like, how did we allow pe- them to get Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith and Sidney Brown with the pieces they already have on both ends of the, on the, of the ball? I was like, Ain't no, ain't no we allowed, my boy. <laughs> but, <laughs> but sometimes they take. Sometimes they uh, just no, take. No, I, I, uh, I, I, I look at realistically. I, I'll say this, and and here's the wild part, right? I think a lot of teams have done well in the draft this year. I, I I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. There's one team that I think has done. Uh, I think they made some good picks at, at today. I have no idea what Detroit was doing day one. Oh my god. I have no idea what Detroit. Like, listen, I get it, right? Y'all feel better oh. about where y'all at. Y'all rock with. I think Jameer Gibbs is actually going to be a good player. Not at 16, though. Hey, yo. <laughs> now, listen, Bro. he'll still be a good player. I just wouldn't have took him at 16. No, no. Check, check bid. They took him at 12. At 12. That's right. They took him at 12. That's worse. Now, hey, I'll tell you this. At the Bears draft party, we all chuckled together. <laughs> Stop. At the Bears draft party, we all chuckled together. And then they take Jack Campbell at uh, eighteen. Yeah, I was I was confused. Jack, I was confused. I was confused. I was confused. They best pick was in the second round. It was, and sometimes it goes that way. I'm not gonna lie to you. Sometimes you get Hall of Famers in the second round. Speaking of people who fell out of favor, how do you feel about the coach taking Anthony Richardson over Will Levis? And what was it? I want to know what the feel was where you were, because now you're there, former players. Everyone had their expectations. What was the feel in the room? I got to hear this one. Um, oh, no, no. Let me. I got. I got to get to one. I got to get to one. I got. I got to go before then. How was the? What was the room like when the Houston? Uh, when the Houston Texas traded back up? Oh, we two- were. We were. That. That was a shock. I'm not gonna lie to you. Everybody. Everybody lost their mind on that one because it was a. It was like. 
wow, like they really going after it. It, it, It's kind of the same mindset, like, oh my God, like, y'all know y'all got a lot more stuff to get, right? Like, (laughs) y'all gotta, y'all gotta hit on everything in this draft. Like, all right, let's see how this work out. I, I like the aggressiveness early on. I think they got the guys they wanted. Before you heard who what the name was, who did you think they were gonna take? Will Anderson. Will Anderson for sure. It felt it felt right. Okay. Will Anderson feels like a Texan. Like when I look at Will Anderson's game, I watched him in college. I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if Houston took him. Because remember, they were talking about um Not the possibility him. of taking him at two and not taking a quarterback. Yep. So I'm you know not surprised. Funny? It felt they right. They still could have done that. They could have. You probably they don't could've. end up with CJ. Yeah, they could have gotten Will and probably ended up with uh with both Will. Clearly, but listen, listen, clearly they didn't want Will. <laughs> clearly, they didn't want Will. Clear, clearly they didn't want Will. Clearly nobody wanted Will. Um well, no, I I think I think Will's cocky. That's actually one of the there's, things that there's I've been a, there's a line <laughs> There's a line between confident in your game and cocky, right? I'm I'm confident in what I can do. I also understand that I'm not. I also understand that I don't have to run my mouth to be confident in what I do. I feel like Will went into these, and, and I don't know if, if that's really his personality or not, but I feel like maybe he got that advice that somebody told him, you got to be confident in your game. And in his mind, confident meant cocky. Confident doesn't mean that you're cocky. Confident means that your 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 belief in what you can do is higher than what anybody else can tell you you can do or not do. There's a and when you express it, it's that. very different. Yeah, there's a fine line between that. And that's actually something I struggled with earlier on and the different avenues that I was venturing into is it was a thin line between knowing that I was good versus how I articulated what I portrayed. And I think I really do. I really do feel like um, he got caught. He got caught up. He got lost in the sauce of trying to show up, show up and be aggressive. There's a time to be cocky. You be cocky when you be cocky when that person that doubted you is sitting there in your face, sitting there trying to big up you. Or that person that doubted you and said you couldn't make it is sitting there and they sitting there with a goofy face mm-hmm. because now all of a sudden you didn't make it. You know, that, that, that's the time you be cocky. Yeah, bro. Remember, remember that stuff? Like when Derrick Rose said that about an old boy that was back in the shy and every time yeah. you see him now, man, remember I was talking trash. And yeah, I remember that. He said some other yeah. words after that, 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 you know, it might fly, you know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> like realistically, that's the time to be cocky. It's not when you're sitting there trying to get a job interview. The funny thing is, and uh, thanks to the Pat McAfee show, we actually got to hear firsthand from some of those uh, individuals who made the decision for Anthony Richardson. Now, mind you, uh, he was very much so in defense of, uh, I think it's Ballard, right? Ballard's his last name, mm-hmm. GM over there. He was Chris in defense Ballard. of Chris Ballard. He was in defense of some of these players and some of the narratives these kids are getting uh, or uh, tagged on them. So I think he was really talking about C.J. Stroud, but he may have been also hinting toward Will Levis. The one thing he said about Anthony Richardson is, Although they knew it was going to be ugly early, they said it probably won't be pretty early. He was hungry and humble. And they he put emphasis on the humility part. And I, I thought that was really keen. Like you knew he wanted to be great. You knew he had the ability. You knew he had the confidence, but he was humble. And I, I would really love to see what that looked like. I would really love to see what those interviews look like so you can feel the difference. I think that's a learning lesson right there for a lot of people and a lot of kids who are trying to get into this level. Just that, just so you don't mess up your pro days and stuff like that, man. Like, I think that's the one thing. Like, where's the line? Where's the line? So, you know, I think that's uh, it's really interesting. Shout out here, to Anthony Richardson, though. Here's what Changing I tell you. his people. whole life around from a couple of days, bro. That I still, pro day, I, that combine did wonders for him. And right. he took advantage of that opportunity. Shout out to you, my boy. We'll see. Uh, I think he's in the best situation to succeed. I, I do think that. I think number four pick, no matter what, no matter well, what. Well, no, I, I think I think he's I think he's in the best situation to go out there and succeed. Shout out to him. Um, this I still is don't what know I said about need con- you to hit the ceiling. <laughs> this is that I have no need for that. This is what I, I say about cocky and confident. I don't need you to do that. Um, if it feels weird, don't do it. That's all you got to do. If it feels weird, that's wow. That's crazy. 
that's a that's a you got to uh yeah that's crazy that's insane uh but i stand by it if it feels weird don't do it right if that's not in your personality right like I, if you're not the guy and listen if that's your personality that might be the problem too but if that's not in your personality to be out there and just be like Hey, listen, uh, you know, I'm that guy. I'm out here killing it in the game. On, I'm throwing bangers left and right. What? <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> huh? You killing me, dog. I'm going to get that scratch on my side, boy, just for that now. I got to at this point. I'm going to move past that because I can't keep doing that with you because you're going to keep it going. Um, last but not least, I only want to do this uh, because these teams reached a little bit. Yeah. Um, two teams, Eric Cardinals. Uh, Kyler Murray said he liked Paris Johnson. Paris Johnson said he liked Kyler Murray. Next day, Car- the Cardinals get uh, Paris Johnson, which was my pick, by the way. I wanted Paris Johnson. How you feel about it? They took up, they traded up to him for at six. I don't think he would have been drafted that high. I, I don't think he'd have been there where they could have got him at, though. Because they had traded the well, they were higher than that. They were sitting at three. You would you could have traded back and got him again. I think if you believed in him, that's your guy to take. I I Paris Johnson is going to be a good player. For we'll sure. be talking we'll be talking about Paris Johnson whenever he becomes a free agent, gets sick of Kyler, uh, and and see you know like what what he wants to do, possibly coming to the Chicago Bears. We'll be talking about him as that guy, right? Like I I, I really believe that. As far as grade, uh, what I'm looking at, they got him as a 91. That's about higher, right. Uh, the only person higher than He's him. He's going to be a monster. Only person ranked higher than him was actually uh, Peter Skaransky. Weird. Where did he end up going? Peter ended up going to the Titans. It's a good pick. Will Levis. It's a good pick. So... Darnell Wright was fourth at his position, uh, being on the O line. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I still it like not even Bears bias. I still think he was the best. I think he was the the best. best I think he's the best for us. He's the best. That's 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 what it comes down to. Is it the best or is it the best for you? I think he's the best for us. I need a right tackle that's going to be able to also sometimes switch into left tackle. But here's the thing. I got a right tackle and a left tackle now that are both very durable. What the heck is on my head? I got a right tackle and a left tackle now that that I think that we think I got I got a dog just shedding right now. You just see random hair everywhere. Uh, We got a right tackle and left tackle that have been very healthy in their Mm -hmm. time playing football. Um, One of them hasn't allowed a sack versus top competition. And I'm talking top competition. I'm talking about Will Anderson, Jalen Carter, guys like that, right? Like, uh, one of them has not uh, – one of them in the his last season was very good uh, and played above where he was supposed to be slated. Now, was he great? No. Was he amazing? No. But he was he was very good for where he was drafted at in the fifth round. So I think you mm-hmm. have to take all of those things into account when you're looking at what you're trying to build here. And the end goal is not for us to talk about offensive line during the season. Yep. The end goal is for us to talk about Justin Fields making passes. Also, when you look at, uh, I, I want everybody to go look at his tape. I've said this a couple of times. Uh, when Hendon Hooker is making those little, the, the, taking off and running to the right side and, and trying to get downfield, uh, there's this large ma- monster of a man that's standing Some in front of him of leading the way. And uh, yeah, he now plays for the Chicago Bears. Last but not least, you know, we have to talk about this because super producer Joe Holt wouldn't let this go. Um, the highest ranked player in the draft, uh, actually tied, is actually tied depending on what draft board you're looking at or what ranking. He's the highest ranked tied with uh, Bryce Young, Bijan Robinson, Bijan Lamborghini Robinson at this point, thanks to the Lamborghini deal he has. My man has a Lamborghini shout before. Out to him. Shout out to him, man. Hey, good looking dude, presents well. What hey, I got to do I'll, for a Lamborghini deal out here? Man, listen, I guess you got to be a, a quarter uh, running back that actually doesn't look like he should be a running back. That man looked like he might run for office one day, too. Uh, <laughs> he's just pristine, you know, shaking hands, uh, man, kissing babies rocking. and stuff like that. Uh, he goes number six, number eight, eight overall. Falcons. Well, you know, I think it's gross. No, I, 
I think uh, I, By the way, I, I, two I, running backs go top 15. Something that, you that, now, the second one is wild. The second one, Muzz, is uh, are straight up doing cocaine on. Uh, that's that's all that draft room was. I ain't going to lie to you. I looked at that draft room, like at least when I looked up, it looked like half the people in there were like, do we just take a running back 15? What the heck? <laughs> but hey, uh, or 12, whatever it was. But um, I think the Falcons, here's what I'll say about the Falcons. The move that makes Bijan okay to me is the fact that you have Zach Harrison drafted in the second round for the edge or in the third round for the edge. Right. Um, you you also come into it in the second round. They took a offensive lineman who is is that it's not JSM. Hold on, give me a second. Who did Atlanta? Take? No, Atlanta didn't take JSM. Because uh, we talked about it. We talked about they picked up a good person for their. Um, I'm going through Matthew Bergeron. Is that who they took? Yeah, guard. They took they took an offensive lineman in the in the second round. Yeah, Matthew Bergeron, uh, at, at thirty eight, and um, yeah, you're building with a plan. I don't agree with the plan, but they're building with a plan. You don't go out there and take a running back, and then just be like, all right, now go praise God. <laughs> Get them some dudes that are gonna open up holes for them. I like the, uh, adding Matthew Bergeron to the team. I think he does a a good job for them. Hey, Pat, I out of, appreciate out of you. Quebec. I wanted to give a, a little taste of that, get some clips going on with that one. So we'll see people get a taste of, of your opinion from being inside. Uh, I thought you were at Hallis Hall. You were actually at Soldier Field. That's Soldier Field. And I don't know why play. everybody kept promoting Hallis Hall randomly. And I was just like, are we at Hallis Hall? And they was like, nothing's happening at Hallis. I don't know. But that's what that's what my uh, producer, shout out to Eric O. Uh, he was like, he's like, nothing's happening at Hallis. I don't know why we keep pro- promoting this. And I was like, who's Why? promoting it out here? Like, people think we had Hallis. Why wasn't it at Hallis, though? Because we had, they have a 60,000 seat stadium. <laughs> no, the city technically does. We about to move. Well, we still there right now. Hey, listen, I just want to ask. I mean, I've never really seen the inside of Hallis. I will so say I this. I had a pulled pork sandwich up in that mug for some reason because I was trying to find food at first. And I went the entire day, dang near, without eating. Fire. Shout out to whatever company had to pull pork up in there. <laughs> hey, man, listen, we appreciate you all. Appreciate you all for sticking out for this. Appreciate you, all you all who joined the live. Uh, we had a good time. We had a lot of people come through. It was a nearly a four-hour event, so the fact that some of you all stuck that out, shout out to y'all, man. We really appreciate the love. Uh, we didn't have the exciting trade or draft like we did with Justin Fields. When we all came to really come to know we and love each other on this channel. Uh, but we made the right moves, and I think that's what you really want. You want a GM to make the right moves for your team to get wins, and that's what we got. Pat, get any last words for him? Uh, nah, man. Um, I'm uh, I'm pretty much bears out for one day, and guess what? I'm going to go to sleep for a couple hours, wake right back up, and be charged back up for more draft because I'm the guy that sits there, and I'm like, who'd you take in the fifth round? <laughs> that's the one thing about jumping in this game that is hilarious to me. Nobody's breaking down drafts like the fans. <laughs> That's what we have draft experts for, apparently, bro. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm sitting here asking in-depth draft questions. The Muzz are just like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, y'all ain't looked at uh, Kenny McIntosh in the fifth round, possibly going to the Bears? No. Hey, man, you know what, though? That's that's part of you being uh, wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, new kid on the block. Never change that about you, man. I'll be there with you one of these days. I was gonna uh, say, it's like, why, why is he? Why is he talking like he's not gonna see me on the show tomorrow? Like, I appreciate you for pulling up on the channel, brother. <laughs> I mean, I gotta give you a shout out and stuff like that. But by the way, I'm. Hey, you never, you never know. I might actually get my game up and actually, let, you know, compete with you on one of these shows. You know, I would love to debate you on a national topic. Not, not, not dressing like one of the gaggling ghosts from Scooby Doo. You know what? You look like a janitor for the bear. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Man, I got to go to bed, I swear, man. Come on. I swear for the Lord, there's a ghost old Scooby-Doo that has on that exact same hoodie. I am going to find this pic and crop them together for Twitter, bro. I swear that this man exists. <laughs> Pat, you look like you get Waddle's coffee every morning. Hey, uh, no, nah, we, we got a beautiful coffee machine in the office, man. It's crazy to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to think about what's going on up there, man. Y'all stay blessed yeah. out here, man. <laughs> hey, 
I was thinking about changing the name of the show, by the way, to Path the Designer and the Breezettes. What do y'all think about that? I'm just playing. <laughs> this man right here. I definitely, hey, yeah, you go ahead and do that. It's going to be you, Jay, Holt, and Ringo, because I'm definitely not going to be that. It's like, no, of course, you'll, you'll have seen the light and faded off into it. Oh, this guy. This guy. Man. Oh, I, hope man. You, I hope you find your blue shades one day. Blue shades. Feel like that's a long play joke. I'll get it later. It hey is, man, later. appreciate y'all for tuning in to show. <laughs> it's love is always. Man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Apparently, I'm on the outside. That's tough. Uh, y'all stay safe out there. We so tired. Feet. We don't even know how to end this recording. Hey, bro, show. I'm trying to end it. You keep <laughs> jumping in. And hey, you keep trying to call me Scooby Doo. You keep still looking like you work at uh in the back with the broom right now. You look like uh you like the, you look like you clean the balls for a living. Like that's what you look like. <laughs> Like you clean the football for a living, dog. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, look, hey, you look like you help Justin Fields with Deflate Gate. That's what it looked like. Hey, my boy, you look like you you, you rock with Jimmy Butler and cut the chest out on the on the jersey, bro. Yeah, well, that's the I know wildest you see, story I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> he said nothing but hey. chest. He, like, said, he said he said he opened a jersey and the chest was out. <laughs> he cut the Minnesota out. It just said Timberwolves. <laughs> man, get off this. Get off this live, man. Hey, man, follow this, us on whatever. everything at Path the Designer at One P Kid. Man, as always, it's been a long draft weekend, man. Y'all already know how that go, but it, one of the best weeks of the year. This is the Bears Super Bowl. Hopefully, until we actually get to a Super Bowl. As always, man, it's your boy Path the Designer back at it again. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Peace.